Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at some of the guns they're going to be selling in their upcoming May of 2017 firearms, premier firearms auction. And they have a couple of submachine guns in this particular auction and I wanted to take a look at this one today. This is a Star Z63. Now Spanish firearms here in the US don't have a very good reputation and sometimes that's earned and sometimes it's not. And I am going to go out on a limb and say that with this particular gun, a general prejudice against it simply because of its Spanish origin would not be a fair or justified complaint. So firearms manufacturing in Spain was consolidated into just a couple of companies after the Spanish Civil War. And one of those was Star, uh, Benicio Echeverria. And after World War II, they started making the Z45, which was basically a, an improved copy of the, uh, the German MP40. And then in 1962, they introduced a much better, more modernized gun, and that was the Star Z62, which is very similar to this, but in addition to being available in 9x19, the 62 was also available in 9x23 Largo. They fairly quickly realized that the Spanish army was really the only outfit in the world still using 9mm Largo. If they wanted to really move into the, the future of small arms if they wanted any export contracts, and really if they wanted to keep pace with what the Spanish army was probably going to do, they really needed to just be available in 9x19. So they were able to simplify the gun just a little bit, shorten some of the components uh, by dropping the 9x23 option. So the standalone, only available in 9x19 gun became the Z63. Uh, it was actually introduced in the mid or late 60s, not in 1963. They just gave it that name because it was one slight iteration uh, beyond the Z62. Now this at first glance looks kind of like a generic blowback submachine gun and that is how it works, but it has a number of interesting features, mostly safety related features that were added into the bolt. And I wanna take a look at those because there really can be, there's a lot more under the surface of some of these guns than you might realize if you just look at them all and assume they're all generic blowback submachine guns. So let's take a closer look at the star. Couple basic starting statistical facts here. Rate of fire on the Z63 is about 550 rounds a minute, and it weighs in at about 2.9 kilos or about six and a third pounds. Although it actually kind of feels a little bit heavier than that because the grip is pretty much right in the middle at the balance point of the gun, which means when you're holding it, you're pretty much holding all the weight in one hand with something like a six pound rifle You'll typically have one hand at the back and one hand at the front, and you split that weight and it feels lighter. This is actually lighter than it feels because one hand. Now submachine guns aren't particularly complicated things. The controls on this are no exception. There is a cross bolt safety here in the pistol grip, so that is on the fire position. You can see the red. When I push it, so when I look at the S for safe and push the button, it's on safe. The other side has an F for fire. We have an interesting trigger here in that it's a two finger trigger and if you pull the bottom it fires in semi-auto and if you pull the top it fires in full auto and the way it does this is on the bottom it's just pivoting but if you pull at the top it actually pushes the lever the trigger back this direction. So now having not actually fired one of these I've just played with it dry firing a bit and this seems to work pretty well although firing it in full auto is a little bit awkward. I think the best way to do this would actually be to keep two fingers on the trigger all the time, which is a little weird for those of us who are used to shooting, say, rifles, uh, but for a submachine gun, I think that would make more sense. The magazine release buttons right here on the side, and that's very standard. We have a double stack, double feed magazine. So good magazine design. And lastly on controls, we have a non-reciprocating charging handle right there. We'll get to this in a moment because this is built, has some of the safety mechanisms built in that, that are pretty cool. But when you're firing, it doesn't move, it snaps forward, stays nicely out of the way. The markings are a little bit hidden under this bed liner sort of finish. Um, actually really reminiscent of the Sterling submachine guns in several ways, but the finish is one of them. Uh, anyway, Star, uh, which was located in Eibar, España, and it is the Modelo Z63. We have a serial number up there at the top. As with many submachine guns, the stock is a folding type. So on the butt plate, what we're actually going to do is pull it backwards this direction. 
That will allow me to fold the butt plate up like that. And then we have a keeper latch down here. I'm gonna pull the whole stock backwards to pull it back behind that. And then the stock folds up. And at the front, this, push the butt plate back against spring pressure and we can hook it inside the front of the receiver tube there. Then what was the butt plate now serves as a front grip. And you can use the gun without the butt stock should you want to. Thanks to the cooling holes, this stays away from the barrel so you can actually grip it all the way up here on the receiver tube without it overheating and burning you. The sights are an aperture type and it's an L-shaped flip sight. So there's a 100 yard aperture or 100 meter aperture and a 200 meter aperture. Pretty standard, basic hooded front post there. Okay, now we can get to the cool stuff on the inside. And to do that, we're going to start by removing the end cap from the receiver. In order to do that, we need to depress this little plunger in the middle. And this is a, one of the, the poor design elements of this is that there's a lot of spring pressure on this as soon as I take it off. So hold on to it tight or it will go flying across the room. Um, we'll just use our universal disassembly tool here. We'll push that plunger in and then we can rotate the end cap. We wanna rotate it 45 degrees and then it's going to come off. As I said, there is a lot of pent up recoil spring in there just waiting to fling this thing off into your face or your ceiling or your nice picture window. Now, interestingly, the recoil spring also has a big heavy weight in it. This helps reduce the rate of fire. All right, now we can see one of the cool safety features of the STAR. As we know, one of the persistent potential safety hazards on a submachine gun is that if you hit the back of the gun, you can give the bolt just enough bounce to come back far enough to pick up a cartridge, but not hit the sear, and then run it forward into the chamber and slam fire it. Truly an accidental discharge. With the STAR, they have added a mechanism so that the bolt can't come out even if there's nothing holding it in place. If I want to take the bolt out, I have to actually use the charging handle. The charging handle is just a little rod that comes back and it's on its own spring. So now that I've gotten it there, I can slide the bolt out. Let's take a look at how that safety works. So the unusual thing about the front of the star bolt is that it has these two, two dowel pin button things in the front of the bolt. It also has this ratchet sticking out the side of the bolt. What happens is that ratchet is connected to that, no, that rod. So when you use the charging handle, the charging handle rod lines up with that, bun, that button, that rod. And when you pull the charging handle back, it pushes that plunger into the bolt and thus allows it to travel. Otherwise, the ratchet locks into this recess in the receiver. And that's what prevents the bolt from going back, no matter how hard you might hit the butt of the gun on the ground or someone's head or anything else. Now the star also has a moving firing pin. You can see it here, how it doesn't protrude up through the bolt face. That's another added safety feature. Uh, it's really hard to have an unintentional or, an, well, a mechanically unintentional discharge if the firing pin's not exposed. So the firing pin itself is actually connected to this other button on the front of the bolt face. Push that in and the firing pin comes out. What this does is when you fire the gun, the bolt of course slams into the rear of the trunnion or barrel face and that button gets depressed flush with the face of the bolt. That pushes the firing pin out. So this is like an automatic hammer. As soon as the bolt closes, like physically, because the bolt closes, it causes the firing pin to protrude and fire. So there's a lot more complexity to this bolt than you would normally expect just from looking at the outside. Because of their mechanical simplicity, it can be really tempting, I think, for designers to make submachine guns that are really a little too simple and prone to some of these potential accidental discharge types of malfunctions. And it's really cool to see that Star took the other route and actually put a number of clever little features in the gun to prevent those sorts of things from happening give you a quick little demo of the trigger mechanism here. This is of course an open bolt gun, so the bolt's going to lock open. And then if I pull the bottom of the trigger, the bolt slams forward and I'm holding the trigger down. 
and the bolt will lock back open, forcing me to let the, to release the trigger in order to fire it again. However, if I pull on the top of the trigger, the bolt goes forward, and it continues to cycle until I release the trigger. So I think the way you would actually want to use this really is, awkward as it may seem to us, to have two fingers on it. And if you're firing semi-auto, you can kind of do this thing and, and index your main finger, your, your, well, index your index finger, and fire with your middle finger. And then if you want to fire full auto, it's easier to use both fingers than to try and use one, which has a tendency to slide down to the bottom of the trigger. All right, well, hopefully we have a new perspective on a gun that many people would just naturally assume to be junk. This is actually a really slick little submachine gun. Now, it is coming up for sale here at Rock Island. Uh, it is, however, a dealer sample gun. So there's a pro and a con to that. The con is, if you don't have a uh, machine gun dealer's license, well, you can't legally buy it. The good news is, if you are a machine gun dealer, it'll be nice and cheap because uh, these guns don't bring the value that uh, transferable ones do. So if you're interested uh, in buying it yourself or just keeping an eye on it, check out what those machine gun dealer values are, well, take a look at the description text below. You'll find a link there to Rock Island's catalog page on this guy, and you can see their pictures, their price estimate, their description, and everything else that you need in order to uh, place a bid on it should you want to. Thanks for watching.